Previously, we showed how the DIY RE Trinity holds up against many different stabilization systems. Following that, we made another video talking about the real-world application of such a device. In this video, we ask, how can we further improve the DIY RE Trinity? Let's get into it. Hey guys, what's up? Chris Jaden here. Before we begin, I'd like to give a bit of thanks. Today's video was brought to you by, well, you guys. No sponsors, just you guys. More specifically, we had a really, really good comment from our previous video, prompting me to make this as a follow-up. This comment is by Stefan Mueller. I hope I'm pronouncing your name correctly. I have a friend named Steven, but his name is spelled Stefan. Beats me, I don't know. <laughs> Anyways, I digress. Stefan Mueller says, hello Chris, thanks for the physical explanation. Did you use the adjustable head of the Steadicam to balance your whole system? If not, you can try to remove the head. I found a nice quarter inch thread on my Flycam 3000, and I used a quarter inch to three eighth inch adapter to mount my Crane V2 directly on the stick. I also replaced the counterbalance weight at the bottom with a heavy M20 machine screw with nuts. I could turn the stick much smoother and the system is easier to handle. Just wanted to share my experience with you and others. Now let me explain why Stefan's question is so important. In our previous videos, we showed off the real world capabilities of the DIY RE Trinity, and we also talked about how it works. But there's still one more important aspect that we haven't had the chance to talk about. And that is handling and the overall user experience. We do have the advantage of wider and smoother panning and tilting arcs. But we also have to remember that the components for this DIY system were not designed intentionally for this purpose. So here are two of my remaining gripes with this DIY system. And that is the weight and the range of motion. So this current setup of mine is clocking out at 2.732 kilograms. It's about six pounds. And over a long period of shooting, that's quite heavy in terms of weight. As for handling, my complaint is that when I'm panning left and right, sometimes I end up hitting the bottom of my knuckles on the head plate of my Steadicam. And it actually hurts quite a bit, not to mention the fact that it also ruins the shot. That being said, I have found some ways to, I guess, mitigate some of the weight. And that's the shoulder vest over here. In the bottom of my city cam, I have a little hole, and I can actually mount that onto this little hook over here. Now this makes carrying it around much, much easier, but it is not perfect. This shoulder support vest over here is actually not designed for cameras. This is actually for a marching band drum kit. So if you actually try to shoot footage like this, you're gonna get a lot of bobbing. Now the real RE Trinity system comes with its own body vest, but I don't have that kind of luxury to spend $50,000 on the real thing. Nor am I within budget to actually spend money on a $250 to $500 Steadicam vest right now. So this will have to do. Now that being said, all is not lost. Today we're gonna to be looking at the DIY RE Trinity system to see how we can actually further improve, make this thing better, upgrade it, modify it. And the majority of that today is gonna to be focusing on modifying the Steadicam component of our stabilization system. So now let's head back to the workshop. So we're gonna be doing two different upgrades today. One is a simple lens switch. So honestly, we're gonna leave that to the end. That's not as exciting. But the exciting part is, well, if you see all these tools in front of you, we're gonna be using these to modify the Steadicam component of our DIY RE Trinity. So for the tools that you'll need today, you will need a pair of needle nose pliers. You will need some electrical tape or just any tape that you can find. So we'll be using two different hexagonal bits. We have an H4.0. We also have an H3.0. We're also gonna be using a star bit, so kind of shaped like an asterisk. We're gonna be using a T6. You will also need a set of taps. So the purpose of these tools is to cut some threads down the channel of our Steadicam. And because we want to adapt 3 8 inch screws, we're going to be using a 3 8 inch tap. Now I'm not sure what exactly this is called, 
but we're going to be using this to hold our tapping bit. Just goes down the center and we tighten it up. And by turning it clockwise, we're going to be cutting some threads into the Steadicam's channel. Now, if you want to know more about taps and dies, you want to get into that nitty gritty detail, I'm going to leave a card up here in this corner and that's going to lead you to a video created by a channel called Make. The video itself is awesome, but I think that their music choice is kind of unique. It sounds like there's a... <laughs> some zombie apocalypse playing throughout the entire video. But nonetheless, it is a good video. I suggest you watch it if you're really interested in these. So in addition to all these handheld tools, you will also need something that will prevent your Steadicam from moving. Today, we're gonna be using a vise and a clamp to secure that vise. Now in your specific situation, you might not need a clamp. For me, I'm not ready to drill holes into my table. Now, we also have some other components that we will be bringing up later on today. One of them came in an Amazon package I got recently. It comes with a bunch of different knickknacks. So, for example, this is like Stefan Mueller mentioned earlier. This is a quarter inch, so at the top quarter inch to a 3 8 inch screw adapter. Uh, it also comes with one of these, I guess, quarter inch thread strap rings that you would attach to, I guess, or your gimbal or your camera, and then you attach a strap to the bottom. But we're not gonna be using the ring part. We're gonna be actually using this rubber gasket on the bottom. So let me take this off for you guys. I'll leave an affiliate link down below if you do wanna pick up this exact assortment for yourself. Now, while I'm disassembling this, I wanna remind you guys that if you do like the content on my channel, please hit that subscribe button down below, as well as the bell button to get notifications when I make new videos. I also have a Discord server if you want some more live interaction with me. If not, you can always just leave me a message in the comment section down below, but I'm more active on my Discord server. Now your setup might not exactly be the same as mine, so there might be some variation of the tools that we have today. By all means, you're welcome to buy the same model I have. This is the cheapest one that I could find on Amazon, the newer Carbon Fiber Steadicam. This is a 24 inch, 60 centimeters, I believe. The first step after removing our motorized gimbal is twist off our head plate over here. So we're gonna be using this later in this little ring that you see over here. Now we're gonna to wanna to think about how we can secure the Steadicam. I want the vise to clamp on somewhere around here, so I'm gonna put tape around this corner. We're gonna cut it with some scissors, remove the excess. Now we can actually mount our Steadicam to our vise. Don't tighten it too much. You don't want to crack the carbon fiber cylinders. So when we first start, we wanna make sure that our tapping tool is level as possible. I know it's hard to be perfect. We apply a slight downward pressure. We don't go too fast. We just want enough to get those teeth cutting in for the first few revolutions. You can also increase the cutting efficiency using oil. Now, if you're interested in different types of cutting oil, there's a video up here by Project Farm. To summarize that video, any kind of oil will help, but of course, some cutting oils are better than others. Today, we're gonna to be using some vegetable oil. Attach to the sides, just like that. We'll let it drip down the teeth. Now, I'm getting some resistance from the tapping tool, and that's causing the steady cam to turn as well. So I'm gonna apply some pressure with my knee. So for every revolution or few revolutions in the clockwise direction, we also wanna go back counterclockwise to cut off some of the aluminum chips. So I'm gonna do a few revolutions clockwise, and then we go back counterclockwise. We're gonna take this tapping tool all the way back out. And we do have a lot of metal shavings here. We gotta clean that off. So just like Stefan Mueller did, we will be using a 3 8 inch to one quarter inch adapter. The quarter inch side will be going to your camera or to your gimbal. Or in my case, I'm gonna be using this Jiyun quick release mount. And it's gonna allow me to more easily choose when I want to use my DIY RE Trinity or when I just wanna use a regular little tripod. Okay, now it's time we get into our little screwdriver set. So using the H3.0 bit, we are going to unscrew the screws. We actually don't need this anymore. So we want this piece. Now, if you notice our carbon fiber sheath can still come on and off. We don't want that to happen. This is gonna allow us to secure our carbon fiber sheath and then twist it back on. And just like that, our carbon fiber sheath is secured. It doesn't go up and down. And we just have this little one quarter inch thread exposed. Next part, I'm going to add this rubber gasket here. Okay, rubber gasket is on. Now we're gonna attach our G and quick release mount, okay? Just like that, it's tightened. Earlier we were cutting aluminum and that actually fell down this carbon fiber sheath. I don't want to scratch it when I'm adjusting the arms. So what I'm going to do actually is going to clean the inside out. We're going to be using an H4.0 now. Let's turn it over. If you notice, there's a little hole here. This is where we used T6. Let's clean it out. It's a hollow tube here, so we just flick it. Mostly clean, and then we can put this back on. Now we have a modified steady cam. So I just mount my gimbal on the top and we're done. This 
this way. Okay, so that's pretty much it for the study camp. Next, we're going to be looking at the top portion of our DIY Art Trinity. In my previous video, I talked about how there are several lens options when it comes to my current setup with the June Crane M2, one of the smallest gimbals out there. And pairing it with my a7 III, I'm kind of restricted with some of the lenses I can use. At the time, I only had two lenses. This is the SEL 50 F18F full frame lens. This is an APS-C lens, the SELP-1650. Now with some awesome circumstances, I managed to pick up this other lens. This is another lens I mentioned in our previous video. This is the Samyang Autofocus 24mm f2.8 full frame lens. Normally, this lens prices at about $374 Canadian, at least on Amazon that is. Luck had it that while I was browsing Facebook Marketplace for the first time in like ever, I managed to snag a deal. A guy was selling it secondhand for 175 Canadian dollars, no tax, and it works perfectly. I tested it out on the day of. It's really clear, the autofocus works. It's full frame, 24 millimeters, which is kind of the effective focal length of this little lens. But this has the added benefit that it's full frame, so when I'm shooting pictures, I get all the possible megapixels from my sensor. It also has the added bonus of being f2.8. So that's actually a wider f-stop compared to this SELP 1650. So when I talked about all four lenses in my last video, I also showed on screen how big the lenses actually were and how much they weighed. So this lens over here is, I think it was about 32 millimeters, 34 millimeters, whereas this one was about 30 exactly. And the weight is very, very similar. This is 116, this is 120. What I forgot to point out though, is that when you use this SELP 1650 pancake lens over here, it actually increases in size. So you can actually see how big it becomes. Now. Of course, with the Samyang lens, because it's not a power zoom lens, we won't be able to use the zoom controls on the side of our Jiyun Crane M2. However, when I'm using this in my DIY RE Trinity system, I'm usually not even using any of the zoom controls, whether it's on the lens itself or on here. I'm usually just going for a prime lens feel where the focal length doesn't change. So this is actually perfect for me in this setup. We only increased the weight by 4 grams, but in doing so, I think we made our Jiyun Crane M2 and Sony a7 III setup much, much more balanced. Okay, so let me remove this mini tripod and show you the fruits of our labor. Okay, and this is our new setup. I've changed the overall balancing and weight of my DIY R Trinity. I switched out the lens. This one is much longer and it's APS-C, so kind of yuck. Before, we would have to seat it at the very, very bottom just so we get clearance over here. But because we were able to move the camera a bit forward with this new lens over here, we we're actually also able to seat our camera higher and still get the same amount of clearance. I've also removed the top plate over here from the steady cam, which would always bang my knuckles, give me bruises as well as ruin the shot. Is when I would be turning and I hit it, it jerks the camera. I also reduced the amount of weights I actually needed for this gimbal, so that actually makes it much easier to handle, turn, and also reduces the stress on my forearms, my muscles. And I also have this quick release mount here. So in a Jiffy, I can choose between using the DIY RE Trinity or mini tripod, just like that. So while I continue to play around with this for the end of the video, I just want to remind you guys that for all the products that we listed today, there will be affiliate links down below. No extra cost to you guys, but I do get a commission from Amazon and it helps keep the channel running. So please make sure to check it out. It's in a kit.co link in the description down below. Don't forget to subscribe and hit that bell button down below. I will see you guys in the next video. Peace.